Hi everyone, our journal page today and I want to do, use a map in the background. I have this uh, bunch of maps I got from uh, some uh, thrift store and I've already ta taken a few pages and just cut them uh, to these squares. I just used the, the grid lines on each map to cut nothing uh, special about it and I want to start by collaging them to my page you can use a glue stick you can use white white uh, glue whatever you have and I'm going to start what happened to my glue stick oh, it's okay so just putting some glue and starting now I'm going to start here on this side I want my focal image here and by uh, piecing all this gluing all these pieces I'm aiming for some interest and texture in the background I could have uh, just taken one sheet of map and glued it to my uh, page but what I wanted is to get some more interest and texture and now I'm going to start overlapping again for to get the texture between the pieces like this and I think I'll uh, use more of the light blue pieces than the other ones but we'll see how it goes just starting to put down pieces As you can see, I'm overlapping. I want to break uh, the, the straight lines. I don't want straight lines. I want interest. Like so. So I'm going to uh, keep at it. And I need another glue uh, stick. Oops. So this is going to be quite boring because I'm going to repeat the same thing over and over until I'm I'll cover this whole page. Uh, this one this journal I've made it from uh, this is called Bristol and it just uh, I had a lot of uh, this black uh, Bristol paper so I just uh, put it back to back and I'm having fun uh, working with it. So I'm going to uh, continue gluing these pieces and I'll be back. I'm back. So my, I have all my page uh, covered and I have here some gesso which now I want to add a little bit of water and I want to do some wash on top of all of this. I want to um, tone it down. I don't want it to be the main uh, thing on this page. It's a background. I want to. I want to push it back. So let's take some brush. Mixing it with the water. little bit more of water I, my gesso got thick on me and needs a lot of water okay let's hope this is good I'm going to take a baby wipe I don't want brush marks on my page and I'm hoping that with the baby wipe I will have a very subtle uh, effect on the background 
almost uh, not noticeable but it's better to start like this and I will add if I need more uh, instead of putting down a complete white cover and then I can't remove it so I'm going very easy here now the, the <laughs> it's not flowing for me today the fact that I'm putting a uh, this a deleted a uh, gesso on my page will also give me a good base for whatever a uh, I want to put on top because I do want to add some some kind of color to this page and the gesso will help it the map is quite a flimsy a uh, paper so it's better to go about it this way I haven't diluted this <laughs> batch. It seems that with the baby wipe, it's good enough. It smears quite a good on page without uh, adding water. Just a little bit in some places where I think there is too much detail. I'm just adding. Okay, push it back. Mission accomplished. Now I need for this to dry before I continue. I'll be back. back so now I want to build some more interest and layers to my background I'm going to use I've got this a uh, compass stamp and I've got this nautical blue a um, memento ink pad uh, this is a permanent uh, ink and I'm just going to stamp it randomly on my page don't care about the quality of the print it's only to add interest and some of it will get covered with the next <laughs> uh, layers so really doesn't matter okay enough with this now I've got this uh, stencil another compass compass and I want to use the gesso and we'll see what happens I am planning on using either chalk pastels on top or a uh, some spray I want this page to turn a little bit brown a little bit as if it's uh, an antique not aiming to make it an antique just give it a little bit of brown tint so I'm just uh, stenciling with a makeup sponge and the gesso now this is also going to push back a little bit of the details that I have on the map and you can hardly see it here but I'm hoping that once I use uh, the spray or uh, the chalk pastels then it will be just one more uh, thing that will add to the whole uh, background again I'm not uh, worried about how crisp it will be I'm just putting it randomly on my page a 
yeah let's see let's put a little bit off the edge I always like to stamp and stencil details that go off the edge I think it's more organic this way but you don't have to <laughs> just personal preferences and let's do one more here just a little bit down here yeah and 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 this is it okay so enough with this stencil now I need for this to dry before I'm a uh, attempting to add paint to the whole thing I'll be back I'm back so I'm going to uh, start uh, trying to add some uh, brown tint to my page. I'm going to start with chalk pastels and hope that it will work. I never, uh, <laughs> I'm never sure something will work. It al always depends on the quality of the paper and whatever mediums you used on top of it like here I'm uh, smearing it and most of it is coming off let's see if I can be more gentle about it don't like it <laughs> let's try some spray I've got this uh, this is a homemade spray it's from gel food coloring and water not liquid uh, food coloring gel food coloring and there is no recipe I just put some uh, drops with the water and test it if it's uh, to my liking let's do something like this okay so I like it but I need a little bit more and I really like that my edges are like this from the chalk pastel so I'll just add again to my edges a little bit grungy look and again just smearing it Let's wipe a little bit here. <laughs> okay, so I want just a little bit more color. Yeah, starting to take uh, shape more <laughs> to the color I was aiming for I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back I'm back so I like it I'm not satisfied I want more color and let's try something else I've got a piece of acetate here and I've got vintage photo distress ink by Tim Holtz I'm going to put this here a little bit of spray or maybe a lot <laughs> and let's try doing something like that and smearing just like an old a piece of paper with stains and whatnot. So I'm wiping this 
and I think I will use another color I've got also walnut stain so doing the same thing here again putting some on this acetate and Okay. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Again, going to let this dry and we'll see what happens. I'll be back. I'm back. So, I really like that I have stains on uh, my background, but I want to add color and I'm going to do this now the same vintage photo a uh, distress uh, ink with this brush and just in several places that i feel i need more of this brown color it's quite a uh, random as i said i just want a little bit more and maybe i will use one of the other browns, we'll see. I wanted to uh, keep the feel of the light blue that I have from the map in the back and still have a brown tint to my page. So that's, <laughs> that's why the whole struggle. Yeah. This is coming along to what I imagined it to be. So now I'm switching for walnut stain. Starting to take a <laughs> shape. Okay, really like it and I am quite, I want more detail, I want more of this uh, stamp or something else. Let's see, I think I'll take the same stamp and now I will do it with the vintage photo and I'm, I will put it lightly because again I don't want it to be to take from the hole it just adding the little details that will make uh, the background so I'm really putting it lightly and I've got another stamp that I want to use this is from Stamperia and I'm going to use the same ink pad and yeah. Now it's really starting to take shape to what I imagined and again I'm not bothering with a great print it's just so I will have interest yeah okay so I think I'm going to uh, put down my focal point and see how I'm a progressing with this page this is my focal point this hot air balloon and where is my glue stick this is quite a flimsy a uh, paper it's almost like like tracing paper so I'm being very gentle with it and it curls
I can't see if it's straight because of this. Let's see. Okay. Here we go. That's better. And just at the edges I need to add some glue. I'm going to let this uh, settle uh, for a few minutes before I continue. I'll be back. I'm back. So, I've got my focal image. I want to add some, well, flare to my page and that it will, will correspond with this. So, I've put here two uh, uh, colors that will match uh, to my head uh, air balloon uh, this is the dark turquoise and this is some light blue and I want to stencil I've got this stencil which I'm going to put here and I want to do it and still be gentle about it so I'm starting with the darker color and I hope I'm in frame. Let's see if I can move it a little bit. I'll go like this so you will see what I'm doing. So I've, I'm dabbing it so I won't have spillage underneath. And I'm tapping very, very lightly. Now I've taken two colors because when I stencil I like to have two shades of the same, uh, most, most of the time of the same color so it will be more interesting and not flat. And I'm just alternating between the colors, maybe I will even uh, use some of the gesso I have left here. Tapping just to get rid of excess paint. Moving between the colors also uh, helps them blend, and then you get more shades in between. So right now I'm just using the two colors and but maybe I'm afterwards I will tap with a little bit of the white just to give highlights in several uh, places but first I'm laying down these two colors. Oh yeah, I love it. So I'm going to uh, leave it uh, to dry before I'm uh, considering <laughs> of adding some white to have some highlights. And I think I will add more of this uh, on this side. Just thinking if I wanted to overlap a little bit on top of my air balloon or not why not just a little bit so again just taking a little bit of paint and going randomly and switching between colors And 
and here where it's uh, going on top of the uh, air balloon I'm going with, with the little bit of the white yeah just a little bit more checking to see if it how does it look I like it okay so just putting back the stencil here and I will add a little bit of the white I think it just adds to the hole I'm mostly to um, adding the white to the edges don't know how much you can see I will bring it closer to the camera and when I'm finished but I uh, sometimes I'm making a mess okay fixed <laughs> okay so now I want a where is it? Do I want something else? I really like how this added to my page, so maybe I'm not sure. What the worst that could happen? Stenciling away. Just decided on it. Yeah. And here I want another one. all about the layers and 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 another one <laughs> maybe this one will be the last it I really really like it not everything is planned just yeah okay I want to uh, write a word here and I'm going to uh, bring a stencil so I'll be back I'm back. I've stenciled this the word escape with just a stencil and a makeup sponge. Don't have enough time uh, on my recording <laughs> on my phone. The only thing I'm just going I'm going to do I'm going to use the Stabilo all purpose and go around the hot air balloon just to make it a little bit more 
uh, prominent on my page and I'm going around it and I'm going to activate it with water just for a little bit more emphasis on it so let's see I don't want it to drown in water I'm taking a very let's see I think I have smaller brush yeah little bit of water and activating it I could probably have done it also with smearing of uh, black uh, eyeliner pencil just a little bit more <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. I think this is it. That's my page. I really like it. Hope you do too. <laughs> I'm bringing it closer to the camera. So you will see all the little details that are making the interest in the background. So this is it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for leaving me comments below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.